we have Stephen Young, director of Gage. Stephen Young, sorry. Stephen Young, director of Gage, who will be presenting to you about the future of accounting, what's in it for businesses, and how do accountants stay relevant. Please join me in welcoming him on stage. Okay. Thank you all for coming. Give me a bit louder. Thank you all for coming. Uh, the topic today that I'll be sharing is the future of accounting. And it's really to have this conversation to really understand what is the technologies out there and how the whole space of accountants are being disrupted. And even for businesses, how, they, how can they do better businesses with technology out there? So the, the session that we will be having here will be split across three segments. One is helping businesses to be profitable and enjoyable at the same time and where we are today with technology and what's the future of technology for accountants as well as businesses. And last but not least is uh, how do businesses as well as accountants be enablers of technology. Okay, so uh, just a little background about myself. Uh, I'm a chartered accountant and previously I was with KPMG for a couple of years and I uh, was under the US GAP department uh, helping uh, Fortune 500 companies in their internal controls as well as their audit, uh, audit uh, checks. Then after that, I moved on to uh, a commodities firm, one of the largest in the world, uh, one of the six fours, and I was managing over 20 billion in uh, net sales for the region of Asia. So now, currently, I'm running uh, my own accounting practice, helping companies to actually really understand their numbers. So let's move on. Okay, these are some of the technologies that are really out there that are available to accountants. So I'll just briefly run through them. So uh, what is RPA? RPA is a uh, robot process automation. So what that is is um, a series of softwares, automation softwares that uh, is automated by robots. So uh, this is believed to be able to replace uh, outsourcing in lower cost countries. And uh, how, how uh, to, to contextualize this 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 this, uh, this software itself? Imagine yourself as a consolidation accountant. So uh, when I was in the consolidation team, what we do is we send out consolidation packages to all the different countries and subsidiaries. And so uh, what RP uh, and most of the time, if everything comes back smoothly, that'll be fine. But the thing is, most of the time, uh, is there are timing differences, FX differences and there are like different gaps in different countries so there's a mess when, when we do the consolidation so how does RPA come in is what it does is automate the whole process and talk to the systems that is available in the respective countries and pipe it back to the central team and then that in turn gives the accountants a, a lot of lead time and they can do more meaningful work rather than administrative collector of information they can do the various analysis and understand the, 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 the variances why is it for the respective countries and pipe it back up the HQ so for, for big data uh, there's a huge misconception that it, this is commonly used by, by companies like Google, Amazon and uh, Microsoft but actually for, for, for businesses nowadays big data is, uh, is just pulling all the different information sources which is uh, readily available to actually make sense and then uh, give insights to the businesses that you're helping. So for, for instance, even for a clothing retailer, how they have done it is uh, they can install, uh, they can uh, use, make use of software to actually churn out all the reviews that are from customers and predict the amount of uh, sales that, they, are, that they, they would have in the future so that they can plan their inventory management or even for product recalls based on the feedback from the customers. So, so that's, that's making use of the different data sets to actually generate uh, insight and uh, provide value. So one interesting thing in the center which is advanced analytics is something that is out there. Uh, uh, it's split into two categories. One is uh, predictive analytics. And what predictive analytics, I'm sure a lot of accountants out there, uh, what it does is it, uh, you are doing a lot of like uh, future, future projections or sales or budgeting in terms of managing the cost of the company. So that, that itself is uh, predictive analytics. But there's one level above that which is prescriptive analytics which is going to revolutionize the market. So what uh, prescriptive analytics does is uh, it, it uses, uses the information that is forecasted and, uh, and, and comes out with suggestions as, 
actual action to actually run 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 what was suggested. And uh, the uh, the prescriptive analytics market in early 2020 is expected to be used in 35 percent of businesses out there. So for digital assistance, uh, many of you uh, may have have it in your smartphones, and that is uh, like Siri or Google Assistant. And uh, how is that revolutionizing uh, the role of accountants and practices out there is that uh, you can see a lot of uh, companies actually using that for uh, like chatbots for their their e-commerce e platforms or their websites. So this in turn actually makes it a lot easier and uh, infusing it with NLP, which is the natural language processing. What that is is adding that human element into the chatbot. So uh, it's starting to blur the lines. Uh, when, when you're actually talking to a chatbot, uh, as, as a matter of fact, it's actually a robot that's talking to you. So last but not least is machine learning. So machine learning is a very interesting uh, subject uh, by itself because this, is, this technology is already available in our life every day. So if you are, you are searching on something on Google, or be it like uh, you are purchasing something online, after a long day at work, and then you go back home to turn on the TV, and then after it turn on to Netflix. All these are actually mediums, uh, mediums of information houses that are actually collecting all your data to, to understand your behaviors and then prescribe the, the kind of things that they think you need. So as a matter of fact, it's quite, uh, quite interesting because uh, in the near future, this technology will be able to know you better than yourself. So uh, I myself, because I'm running an accounting firm, so I get I get to experience a lot of SMEs out there with uh, with uh, with issues with their accounts and how we can actually use software to actually help their business. So these are some of the case studies that I would like to share with you that how technology actually help the com help help these companies. So one of it is the crane and logistics business over here. So uh, what happened was they came over to us. They had huge cash flow issues and they were taking so many projects. But the thing is, uh, they were having problems with their profitability as well as cash flow. So when we went in to unveil the curtains of the data, and we realized that they had huge AR receivables uh, outstanding in their, in their books. And then when, uh, when we went, went further into the numbers, we realized that 75% of these receivables belong to the top 10 of their customers, which is commonly the case for, for industries like that. So when, when we were able to come up with the, the, the data and supported it with, uh, with, with, uh, with the management, they brought it across and they, they thought about how they can address the situation. And what they did was they carved out, out of the top 10 customers, they carved out a certain pool of it and, told, uh, and, uh, and reached out to them again, gave them the impression that if they would not pay up for the outstanding projects that were done, they will, they will stop whatever projects they are doing. So that actually worked in their favor because these guys are really good at what they do. And in, in turn, that actually uh, restored their cash flow back to healthy levels. So another company is a software company that I, I uh, accounted with. And uh, what happened was these guys are really good at what they do as well. And uh, within a couple of years, they were able to generate $10 million in revenue. So uh, they came to us. And the funny thing is, uh, the reason why they came to us was because they wanted to have more control over the numbers and they wanted to expand overseas. So they were saying like, can you have a look at my numbers and see whether I'm ready or not. So when we actually took into the numbers, we realized that there was, a, there was this huge portion of cash that we couldn't explain where they go to. So then we, we went, we, we asked management about it and they themselves told us about it. So when we dig deeper and we realized that uh, it was, uh, we found out the reason, we put layers of controls over it, and then after that, uh, uh, we implemented certain matrices in terms of like uh, like forecasting as well as budgeting to keep the cost down as well as profitability to make sure that they are in line with the targets. So that actually helped the business put them on track for expansion and probably even into the, into looking into the option of having an IPO. So for, for, for the third company I'm talking about is a landscaping and floral company. So uh, these guys are a family based business and they have been around for decades. So when they came to me, uh, they, were, they were doing all right. But the thing is, they just wanted more sense of control over the company. So what happened was, uh, for the past uh, a few decades, they were actually a landscaping company. And they go around helping uh, private residential estates, uh, like the external compound, to help them do the landscaping for them. And then recently, in a couple of years back, they purchased a, a, uh, a nursery, which is a huge capital outflow. 
And uh, because the wife is the CFO of the business, uh, was so worried about this uh, acquisition because of the fear. She was working from Mondays to Sundays every day for the past two years because of this fear. So when I, when I sat down with her and asked her, what do you really want out of this business? And she told me, if only if I could have a, a nice holiday without worrying about the business. And then I told her, don't worry, we can, we can automate it for you using software and technology. It's definitely possible. So uh, this, these are some of the case studies that uh, technology has indeed influences, influences to these companies on how they do their business and make it profitable as well as enjoyable. So these are some of the technologies out there, I won't go into the specifics. Uh, but uh, one thing to look out for is 5G technology out there. If it's, uh, if it's being rolled out, I'm sure a lot of uh, corresponding technologies will be out there as well to, that they will be disrupted in the wake of uh, 5G being out there. So streamlining, uh, specifically down to accounting, uh, these are four areas that I feel that will be disrupting the marketplace. Uh, first off is uh, cloud accounting software. So uh, I'm not sure how many, how, how many of you are accountants here and have, uh, have actually touched a cloud accounting software because if you haven't, it's, uh, it's probably a good time to actually get, 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 get a sense of it. Because in, uh, based on research, by 2025, there will be, uh, it will be uh, top-based software will be replacing des desktop-based software. And the next, which is artificial intelligence. So uh, AI is going to re uh, reduce uh, low value and repetitive work. And it's really in the, in the process of happening. So it's a matter of how, how far this process will go and uh, whether it makes, uh, makes a lot of these roles that are available redundant. And then the third one, which is blockchain, will make accounting simpler. So uh, if, you, if, you, if you study the, 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 the underlying technology behind blockchain, it's actually a, 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 a software, uh, like a technology itself, that, rely, that, that, really, that is effective only with law of large numbers. That means everybody has to believe in the system for it in order to work. So this will probably be the more distant future for blockchain. And lastly, OCR technology will re eliminate manual entry. So uh, OCR uh, itself here uh, has been a technology, uh, it has been around for, for a long time, but now paired with machine learning, it's a disruptive technology on its own. So, so for instance, like uh, I'm not sure if any of you have used OCR-based technology to capture your receipts. So what happens is you have a taxi claim and you just use your phone to take a photo of it. What it does is it reads out and with currently OCR technology, it can read out, read out all the text almost close to zero, human, uh, zero error. And what it does is it pushes this information into, into this, this, this uh, machine learning platform. And what it does is, uh, if after a, a couple of times, if this is a comfort or a grab receipt, you automatically post this 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 uh, this entry into the respective chart of account and uh, and uh, and the respective expense buckets. So essentially, what what that does is it eliminates the need for data entry for entry for accountants as well as posting for accountants. So here's here's the list of software out there that are really good uh, to to get your hands on or at least to know what is it about. A lot of them offer trial versions. So if if you do really want to have a better sensing of what it does, go and try it. I've broken it I've broken it down into eight buckets uh, in terms of the operational functionality of a business in terms of invoicing or AP collection, cash flow management, point of sales, human resource. Cloud-based accounting software out there. I'm sure there's a lot of vendors out there that can go out and talk to them. They'll keep you up to date. Different tree management software, uh, com combination and uh, consolidation software, and e-commerce and payment gateways. Okay, so the, the main question of today is: Will accountants be replaced? I think that's the fear of the fear in a lot of, a lot of us out there, especially accountants. So actually, if you think about it, accountants are actually the originators of blockchain. So uh, what blockchain essentially is, is actually maintaining uh, a digital ledger. And we accountants, the, the whole purpose of us accountants is to maintain ledgers and to be a manager of ledgers. So we are definitely uh, primed to actually handle this technology. So having the proper fit frame of mind, uh, there's three elements to it, I feel. And uh, for businesses, in any profession, it's always a frame of mind to handle technology. And there's these three parts to it, which being curious, experimental, and adaptable. And with these three, three in mind, 
you don't have to worry about what technology will come because it will just be a natural progression to learn and understand it. So there's this uh, age of disruption. I would like to share this interesting imagery to everyone out here. So this itself is a, techno a disruptive technology on its own. So uh, I'm sure many of you know what it is, but then like uh, what it is inside is a backers. So this was believed to be founded in uh, 1300s uh, in China. And uh, this itself, when it was introduced, was a disruptive technology on its own. So um, what I'm trying to drive here is that at any point of time, even since the beginning of civilization, we, already be, uh, being, we have already been disrupted with technology. It's only where and when, at the point of time, that technology is different and how it manifests itself to work in different ways, to make life easier or make processes easier for us. Okay, so uh, I'd like to tie in uh, with a lot of stories. So there's this uh, last point on the wave of technology. So which is uh, this uh, king, which is King Canoe uh, in, the, in the past. And he was a uh, king of England. And during his time, the people believed that uh, King Canoe was actually uh, almighty. He has, he has so much power, so much wealth, he could do anything he wanted. So King, king Canoe was very wise, and he knew that that was, that was not true. And he decided to prove a point. So what he did was, he, he gathered the people and stood across at the coastal line and told everyone to stand behind. And what he did was, he stood up, he, he raised up his both hands and he, spoke, and he shouted, stop, and hoping that the wave would stop in its in tracks. So this is similar to technology. Technology will come at any, any age and any generation uh, of its time. So it's a matter of how we, we are adapt, uh, adaptable to the technology itself. So are, are we going to let ourselves be run over by technology? Or are we going to ride on the wave of technology? So we accountants are definitely in the best position to ride on the wave of technology advancement. So go out there and inspire the future. Thank you. Sorry, let me know if there's any questions. Any questions out there? <laughs> yes. Uh, sorry, pass you the mic. Um, you mentioned OCR and I, I think the concept for the future, but what I want to ask is, are you aware of the adoption rate or do you, when do you think it will be commercialized? Okay, actually uh, that's a good question. Uh, OCR technology is already out there. Some of the vendors, let me just run through. Okay, uh, offhand, some of the vendors you can look out for is Auto Entry, Receipt Bank, and Expensify. These are already available technologies that are out there. And, uh, and they are pretty much accurate. And I'm using it for my clients as well to actually ease the, the administrative burden. And not only does it remove the, the need for data entry as well as, uh, as, well as posting, it helps uh, the company to save on storage of all these uh, receipts and invoices, especially for FMB, because a lot of these receipts uh, is carbon copy and it actually fades over time. So with the current OCR technology, it actually saves on storage and adheres to the IRAS requirement, which is like like six to seven years of, of, of records that have been placed and you have to keep. So uh, the technology is already out there. It's just waiting for us to use, to use it. Yeah, any other questions? And that's all. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time and hope uh, you enjoy this uh, this wonderful afternoon. Thank you.